70s. The recording is already in progress. All right. Well, according to my clock, it is 6.30, so we will get started. Uh, I see that we do have some attendees on, so welcome. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Kelly Thawley. I am the College and Career Specialist in the Career and Technical Education Department at the School District of Lee County, and we are here with three representatives from the State University System, uh, and we are here for the Future Maker Success Series Are You Ready? live webinars. So I will go ahead and screen share, and we will get started. So tonight's uh, episode is the State University System. So we're gonna talk about college admissions and information. We do wanna make sure that we thank our sponsors. Uh, first of all, the Future Makers Coalition, which is where all of these webinars will be stored and housed on the Future Makers Coalition website. If students and parents, if you go to their website, uh, Future Makers Coalition, then you can just do a quick Google search, it'll come up. If you search across the top on the tabs, you'll see resources. And under that resources tab, I think it's the second or third one down, it will say, are you ready webinar series? Uh, you can register for a webinar. And once you register for one of them, you will automatically get updates and information about all of them. So it will pre-register you for the entire series. Uh, which is bi-monthly through December. So you can see some of our sponsors, the Coalition, the Collaboratory, School District of Lee County, College Unmazed, uh, Florida Southwestern State College. Uh, Dr. Amanda Sterk from FSW is my co-partner, um, also helping me with the series. We also wanna thank Fort Myers Tech, Cape Coral Tech, uh, Florida Gulf Coast University, who is on with us today. Uh, the Foundation for Lee County Public Schools, and Sylvan Learning. So as you can see, this is our flyer. Uh, tonight is September 8th, the State University System. And this is a free informative webinar series that will be bi-monthly to help you navigate through your high school system to college, on to career, and whatever is next. So as we said, today's topic is the state university system. So that encompasses Florida's public universities. In the state of Florida, we have 12 state universities. Uh, that is FAMU, Florida Agriculture and Mechanical University, FAU, uh, Florida Gulf Coast, Florida International, Florida Polytechnic, Florida State, New College of Florida, University of Central Florida, University of Florida, University of North Florida, University of South Florida, and the University of West Florida. So as you can see, we are all over the state, uh, but these are all of the public universities. So they do fall under the same system, uh, the same board of governors. And uh, as you'll see, they have some similarities, but they're also very different as well. So for our students, it's important for you to do your research, um, this is going to be, the state university system is going to be one of your more affordable options. Uh, it is public universities, so it's not private. Um, it is much more affordable than if you look at your private universities. So it's a very uh, great option for our students who are thinking of going four years or six years um, or maybe even onto their doctorate. So this is a uh, part of the matrix. I feel like I, let me see if I can pull that back up. There we go, it skipped the slide for me. So this is what uh, counselors and your college and career specialists probably have access to when they are sitting down to talk with you students about what your choice might be after high school if you are thinking of going the post-secondary route. Um, you always have the option of public or private. Private colleges are usually more expensive. Uh, your public universities are paid for with federal and state funding, so they are a little bit more affordable for you as a student. Uh, and you can look at this matrix. If you talk to your counselors, you can look this up. The website is available. 
um, through this PowerPoint. And uh, this is accessible to anyone. If you just do a Google search for the SUS matrix in Florida, you can look to compare all of the 12 different universities um, as far as what they are, what they require for GPA, SAT, ACT, all of the deadlines, um, and then when they make their decisions. So this is a wonderful tool for our students and parents to use when they're making a, a decision on where they wanna go. Um, you know, based on location, uh, school size, majors that are offered, all of those things go into what you're thinking about doing after high school. So the way to apply, uh, all of our four-year public universities accept the common application, uh, except for FIU, and they have their own institutional application. So if if one of our universities, which most of them do, accept the Common App, we recommend that you use it just because it is one place. You complete the application and then you can use that application for um, 11 of the 12. So not all Florida public universities require an official transcript. So it is important to look to see which ones do and which ones don't. You can consult with the SUS matrix as you see here, or you can talk to your counselors for more information. Uh, a lot of our public universities also will require and accept the self-reported transcript, the SSAR. Um, UCF, as you can see, has their own form that is called the SPARC, and then FIU and FGCU um, also have their own forms. And then uh, you can see down at the bottom the various deadlines and then when the colleges will make their decisions. So cost of attendance. This is also usually a big topic for our students. Uh, this spreadsheet here shows you very quickly um, the exact cost. As you can see, most of our universities Tuition and fees are roughly $6,000 is about the average, which is very inexpensive if you, especially if you can qualify for federal financial aid, um, the FAFSA will just about cover all of that cost for your tuition to make your tuition completely free if you qualify for complete funding through the um, free application for federal student aid. So students, this is the plug, make sure that you complete your FAFSA, which opens on October 1st this year. Uh, and then you can look to see books and supplies, same, pretty average across the board. Um, room and board varies a little bit. Obviously, keep in mind that you're going to have transportation costs. You are going to have probably other expenses, um, just, you know, going out on the weekend, groceries, uh, supplies that you might need for school. And then over here, you can see the total average for our state university system is $23,000, which is extremely affordable if you compare that to what it might cost going to a private school. Um, keep in mind that scholarships as well and uh, institution-based funding. So a lot of these uh, universities also have their own financial aid process. So along with filling it out your application and sending that in, make sure that you check out the financial aid websites for each of your universities that you're thinking of applying to, because there might be a separate application to fill out for institutional aid. Um, and we will definitely cover scholarships and funding and financial aid in a future um, Are You Ready webinar. So register for the webinar so that you can get that information as well. Um, a new tool that has been provided through the Board of Governors and the State University System is called My Florida Future. It's an online college and career planning tool uh, that is meant for students and parents. It has tons of information and it just helps you become more informed about the, the different options that you have in the State University System. So you can access that. Um, on the State University System website, which is www.flbog.edu. You can find all of those links on there. So I do want to go ahead and introduce all of our experts this evening. Uh, from Florida Gulf Coast University, we are happy to have Samantha Haverly, and she is the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions. 
We also have from New College of Florida, Sharon Alcock, and she is the Associate Director of Enrollment Management. And from the University of Florida, we have Pam Lang, who is an admissions officer. So I'm excited about this evening. I think that we have um, a great uh, array of colleges, um, new college, which is very personalized with, I think Sharon shared earlier, they have only about 800 students, all the way up to the University of Florida, which has a ton of students. They're very uh, highly competitive. And then um, here locally in Southwest Florida, we have our gem, which is Florida Gulf Coast University. And they've been doing some amazing things there too and, and growing exponentially. So um, like I said, I'm your host. My name is Kelly Tholly and we are gonna go ahead and turn it over to the experts so that each of them can share a little bit about themselves and about their school. Um, so I will stop sharing and we will start with Samantha. We'll go ahead and give you home field advantage and we'll let you start. Sounds great. Let me go ahead and get my presentation pulled up real fast. I just want to make sure. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. Okay. Going back to the COVID times, have to get used to asking that. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, like Kelly said, my name is Samantha Haverly, Assistant Director for Undergraduate Admissions at FGCU. I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with Florida Gulf Coast, just um, being in your home territory, but hopefully I can get a little bit more information across for you all. Um, I am also the local admissions counselor, so I work with Lee and Collier and Charlotte County studi uh, students. So if you haven't yet seen me in a virtual event or in person at your high school or at different fairs, hopefully you'll see me throughout the year. Definitely try to get out there as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead and learn a little bit about FGCU. I know some of this might be so, uh, somewhat redundant, but hopefully I can get some new information to you all as well. So you can see on your screen, we have 15,000 students and this year we just got shy of 16,000. So we're a rapidly growing university for how fairly young we are. I know we're not the youngest university, but we just celebrated our 25th birthday a couple weeks ago. So we are kind of new compared to some of the other uh, state universities. However, we are rapidly growing. We're getting students from all over the state, all over the country and all over the world who want to be at FGCU. And I think it's because of some of the amazing amenities and opportunities we have. 15,000 students puts us at a small to medium sized university. I think that's a really good sweet spot to be in. We have all the amenities of a larger campus. Our athletic teams are D1. We have great research opportunities. We have a Chick-fil-A and Starbucks on campus, which is probably one of our students' favorite aspects of being a larger campus, but we really do want to focus and emphasize that smaller campus feel. So our average class size is about 33 students, and we have a 22 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So definitely want to keep it on the smaller scale so you have a chance to really get to know your professors a little bit more. With all that personal interaction, I think that sets you up for the best possible scenario for future job opportunities. We are top two for job placement here in the state of Florida. That's something we're really proud of. If you're going to put all your time, effort, and money into going to school, you want to make sure you can find a job at the end of it, and we help you out throughout your time. So we have an excellent career service office that offers internship and job fairs. They'll do resume building workshops. They'll do mock interviews and so much more to make sure you are as employable as possible by the time you graduate high school, or I'm sorry, graduate college. Now we're not all work. We do like to have our fun as well. We have our 15 D1 athletic teams here on campus. And then we also have about 200 clubs and organizations. So we have everything from Greek life to club sports, to my personal favorite, which is the Hammock Club. I love to take naps, so that's definitely the club I would join. Um, but we've got so many different opportunities for our students. Depending on what your interests are, we probably have a club or organization that will meet those interests. I always like to show this screen because it shows some really great hands-on uh, learning activities and opportunities that our students have during their, their classroom sessions. So the top right, I think it'd be your top right, the blue and green screen, the largest photo on there, that's our virtual reality lab or our Viper lab. Now this Viper lab was actually created by our software engineering students. We didn't buy it and bring it in, they built it themselves. 
Um, they'll do really great, um, uh, really great endeavors with it from putting in a new building. For instance, when we were building our water school here on campus, we put it into the campus virtually to see how, for instance, a hurricane would affect it. And this past October, last Halloween, they actually had a haunted house um, through their Viper Lab. So a lot of really cool, both educational and fun activities our students participate in. The top left, um, the photo of the woman with her with a mask, that's one of our nursing students. Um, we have an excellent nursing program here on campus. We make sure that you're working on mannequins or dummies before we actually have you work with real people, just to make sure that you don't have a queasy stomach. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities before you get into your real nitty gritty um, nursing and other health science classes. And then I always like to point out the bottom middle one, our FGCU golf management program. This is one of the most uh, unique majors that we'd have, I, I would say. Um, we are only one of 17 PGA, PGA golf management programs in the country and the only one in Florida. So we all know how many golf courses are throughout Lee County. Um, some of our students have a chance to really work with those different golf courses, whether it's turf management, or helping out with the um, activities on the courses. So one of our uh, definitely kind of cool programs, even if you're not interested in golf or you've never golfed before, they'll have free golf lessons for our students here on campus. So you can kind of dabble in that a little bit. I'm sure um, since you all live local, you're probably pretty aware of South Village or Sovi, but if you're not, let me educate you about it. Sovi is where our freshman students live if they choose to live on campus. What's really unique about Sovi is it's all suite style. What that means is while you might share a common space like a bathroom or a kitchenette with one or two other students, you have your very own bedroom. So you don't have to worry about bunking with the roommate. Um, if you do choose to live on campus, I know some of you would maybe consider commuting, um, but with all the great scholarships, financial aid, if living on campus is something that's feasible for you, uh, you won't have to worry about bunking with the roommate. If you're already living by yourself in your own room, you don't have to um, deal with the roommate here. Also over at SOVI, we offer some intra-level courses, academic advising, um, and then our all-you-can-eat dining hall, and then of course our lovely resort style pool that our students definitely like to take advantage of. All right, I know that this is very tiny print, so you don't have to worry too much about trying to read through all of it. I just wanna give a nice uh, glimpse of some of the different majors that we have to offer. You can find all this information on our website, um, but we have about 70 undergraduate majors and they're all broken down into different colleges and schools. Um, I always like to kind of introduce what a college and school is. I was a first generation student, so I had no idea when people were talking about college and schools when I was looking at a university. I'm like, does that mean I'm going to be going somewhere else? What does that mean? Um, so if you're not familiar with that term, I like to think of colleges and schools kind of like the house that your major sits under with other similar majors. So our College of Arts and Sciences is definitely the most broad. You can see it starts up with anthropology and goes all the way down through theater. So there's a lot of different um, majors within our College of Arts and Sciences. Then we have our College of Education. That one is much more uh, self-explanatory. So all of our education related programs, our Lutkert College of Business, our School of Entrepreneurship, Merib College of Health and Human Services has all our uh, health related programs our College of Engineering, and then our new school, the Water School, isn't currently up here, but that houses environmental science, environmental geology, as well as our marine science program. We also have a variety of undergraduate majors. You're not required to get an undergraduate, or I'm sorry, undergraduate minors. You're not required to get a minor. However, that can definitely strengthen your degree a little bit. And then I know as high school students, you're probably not thinking too far beyond um, your undergraduate degree, but maybe you are. Take a look at some of the different graduate programs we have to offer at, at FGCU. There's a chance you'd be able to start your education with your undergraduate degree and then go all the way through your grad program, if that's something that would be um, of interest to you. All right, I love this shot because it just gives a nice aerial view of our campus. So the big green circle, that is our library lawn. It's a common hangout spot for students. Clubs and organizations will set up booths there. There'll be live music. Food trucks come all the time, which I particularly love because my office is right nearby there. Uh, so definitely a great spot on campus to be and ignore my cat if you hear her meowing. Uh, just past that, that long row of buildings, this is our main academic core. That's where a good portion of our classes are housed here on campus. 
So depending on what you're majoring in, you might not leave this row of buildings here. And it's kind of nice if you have a short amount of time in between classes, you don't have to worry about sprinting from one area to the other in like a 10 minute time frame all the way across campus. So definitely very intentional on how the university was built. Uh, you all know we also have our international airport about 10 minutes away, and then we have our Gulf beaches about 30 minutes away. So if you haven't been on FGCU's campus, come out and visit at some point. Um, it's really easy to navigate. We're basically one giant circle with a couple offshoots. So if you miss your spot, you can just keep going back around and then you'll be able to hit that again. All right, and then the important information, um, especially if I have any seniors in here. So our application, for summer and fall is open. It opened up uh, August 1st. We have early action and regular decision. Early action for us means that um, you apply by November 1st and we receive your test scores and transcripts no later than November 15th. It is non-committal. It does not mean you have to attend FGCU if you're admitted, but it does give you priority consideration and it gives you consideration for our merit-based scholarships. So I highly, highly encourage you to apply early action. If you miss the November 1st deadline, that's fine, but you'll be applying regular decision. That means we are admitting on a rolling basis. So we admit until we cannot admit anymore. And our final deadline is March 1st. Uh, Kelly already mentioned the Common App. So definitely apply on the Common App if you're applying to any one of our other great universities here in Florida. Uh, it can speed up that process for you quite a bit as opposed to filling out a bunch of different applications. And then you'll also see our averages from last year. Um, we do admit at above and below these averages, but we say if you meet the averages, it'll make your application competitive. Um, something I like to mention as far as the ACT and SAT goes is um, you don't have to take both. I always encourage students, if you're able to, try to take each one, see which one you like better, and then take that one as many times as possible, see um, which one you like better, and just keep going from that because we do super score. That means we'll take the highest subscores of different tests in order to potentially create a higher composite for you. And then I'm not going to go too much into tuition and fees because we've already kind of covered that. You're going to have a whole opportunity to learn about how to pay for college at another time. Um, but we do say for students who live on campus, total tuition and fees with on-campus housing and meal plan is about $17,000 a year. One of our scholarships that you'll see up on the screen are President's Gold and President's Silver. That's for our Florida students. So our President's Silver is at $3,000 per year for all four years, and then Gold is $5,000 per year for all four years. It starts at a 3.5 weighted GPA, 25 ACT, and a 1220 SAT. So if you're in your senior year, you have the GPA, you're close to receiving those test scores, but you haven't got, gotten there yet. I still want you to apply early action, send in whatever scores you have, and then you have through the February ACT or the March SAT of your senior year to send an updated test score. So you still have time if you're kind of on that uh, border as far as receiving one of our merit-based scholarships. Something else I do want to mention as far as scholarships go is we'll stack with outside ones. So if you receive something from your high school, local community organization, if you're eligible for Bright Futures, these scholarships will stack on top of each other. We won't take away anything um, because you're awarded outside aid. And then the last scholarship I want to mention is called our Foundation Scholarship Application. So we have a lot of scholarships on campus have different criteria. Could be needs-based, could be merit-based, could be what you're majoring in. It could be what high school you attended and anything in between. And you fill out the one application and your name will be sent to the scholarship committee and they make the decision from there. Um, so that is another thing that both incoming students and current students can apply for. So it's called the Foundation Scholarship. If you're in your senior year, just know it opens up October 1st, same day as the FAFSA application. That was a lot of information, not a lot of time, but I want to pass it along to my colleagues. I'll still be here, I think, for the Q&A at the end. So if you do have questions, hold on to them, and I'd be more than happy to help out. With that being said, I'll go ahead and pass it back to Kelly. Awesome. Thank you so much, Samantha. This was a lot of information in a very short time, um, but it covered so much. So hopefully students, you, you got the, the overview and all of the information that you'll need to at least start thinking about FGCU um, and maybe making that a consideration. So next we are going to go in alphabetical order. So we will go to Sharon from New College of Florida. Um, and this is one of our smaller colleges, um, but I know when I've been on campus at New College, 
It's so cool. They're, they're very, it's artsy, it's kind of quirky and a very specific type of student, but it is a very neat campus and they have some really cool stuff to share about. So Sharon, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen as well. Let's see if I can, let's see where it is. All right. Everybody see that? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm here to represent New College of Florida, uh, which is Florida's uh, public honors college. Um, we were named the honors college uh, back in, I believe it was 2001 um, by the state of Florida. Uh, what that means is that um, the whole college is honors, all the classes. Um, so it, the classes are, you know, college classes, but they're maybe a little more advanced. Um, but don't let that scare you away. Um, we are um, one of the most unique colleges in the state university system, and I say that proudly. I've been working with the college for nine years now. Um, I, I know the students, I know the faculty, I know the staff, and we are we are a community. We are a welcoming community, and we feel um, like a private college. We feel very personalized. Students come here, and they're greeted by their faculty, the staff. Um, the students know, the faculty know their students um, because the class sizes are very small. Um, we'll go over that now. So we're located in Sarasota, Florida, which is about 45 minutes south of St. Pete, um, probably about an hour, 45 minutes from Fort Myers to give you some uh, you know, distance um, relations. We are on Sarasota Bay. So our part of our campus is on the water. So you can see it in the, in the picture um, that I have behind me. And we do have you know, waterfront, um, facilities, including a boathouse, uh, equipment to use sailboats, paddle boards, uh, kayaks for you to take out as a student. Um, we also have a, um, a dock that was recently placed in, a long dock that goes out into Sarasota Bay for um, use in our marine biology program, which is our top program at New College of Florida, which has a boat dedicated to the programs to students go out there and they tag they tag sharks, they tag dolphins. It's, it's quite exciting. Um, the average class size is 12. So um, you will be known in your class. There's no hiding uh, at New College. Uh, that's a good thing. So you want to know that you're gonna know everyone in your class, your professor's gonna know you, they're gonna know you by name. If you're not in class, they'll be like, hey, what happened to what happened to Judy? She's not in class. Um, she hasn't been in class in a couple of days. Can, can you check on her? Can someone check on her? So we do that. We care about each other. Um, we wanna know everyone's doing well. We have a seven to one student faculty ratio um, and 700 undergraduate students. Uh, we do have, um, right now we have one graduate program in data science, which has been um, up and running for about five years now. We have over 45 different majors. We call them areas of concentration. Um, we are considered an arts and science college, which means we cover a variety of different areas, including um, social sciences, natural sciences, and humanities. We have everything from art, music, theater, to chemistry, biology, computer science, statistics, math, uh, political science, marine biology, like I mentioned, um, philosophy, physics, languages, Chinese, Russian, French, um, economics. So you can learn a lot about um, all of these different areas as well as major in one or two. Uh, many students at New College have many different interests and you can explore, you can explore those because you'll have an academic advisor who is, uh, match to you and your interests, and they will help guide you through your four years at New College of Florida. Um, the other very unique aspect of our 
college is that students at New College of Florida do not receive letter grades. So yeah, just think about that for a second. This is uh, something that we have been doing since we started in 1960. Um, there are other colleges around the country that have a similar system. So basically, students are taking classes, they're, they're having their, their, their syllabus that has all of their information, what they're taking, their tests, what they're reading. Um, at the very end of their semester, they will receive a narrative evaluation and appraisal by their professor. That will show exactly how they did in the class, what their strengths are, what they need to improve upon, and, and how to do that. Very constructive feedback. Um, so students here, basically each semester, they have, it's a customized curriculum. They work with their academic advisor, and every semester they draw up a contract. It's an academic contract. So basically, you're sitting down with your advisor and you're going over the classes you're going to take, you're going over your goals, you're going over um, not only that, but what are you going to do outside of your academics? Are you going to join, um, you know, are you going to join the, the uh, student government? Are you going to join the sailing club? Uh, what kind of things are you doing? We want to make sure you have a balanced semester academically and socially. Um, we want you to be successful. Um, so we don't want you to burn out. We want you to make sure you have enough on your plate, not too much, and we gauge each semester, each contract, how you're doing. So as I mentioned, um, it's all about customization here at New College of Florida. Uh, very individualized students here also do independent study projects in the month of January, which means uh, there are no classes in the month of January. Students do an internship. We, we will, uh, our career, um, CEO office, which is our career center, will um, get you internships. You can shadow someone in the field that you're interested. We have students shadowing physicians. We have students shadowing teachers. We have students um, going to Washington, D.C. and going on Capitol Hill and shadowing lobbyists and so forth. We will help you get all those uh, internships and get you ready, um, not only for in school, but re we're ready for when you graduate. Students also do a senior capstone project here, um, and that will depend on what your major is and what that would look like. So it's kind of a culmination of your studies here at New College. So the narrative evaluations, as I was mentioning, and this is a, an example of what one looks like. So it's really better than getting a grade because you're actually getting a chance to figure out, okay, I'm really good at this, but I really need to work on this. And that, in essence, is going to help you even engage more with the, the content that you're learning, but also learn more about yourself. And we're, we're teaching you how to learn basically and how to process information and, and you know work with feedback and work with your professors and your peers. So it's really gonna help you um, gain all these different skills that you'll need to go into the workforce in or if you wanna go on to graduate schools, or if you wanna to go to law school or med school, we're gonna help you learn those skills to be successful in whichever step you'd like to take next. Um, so we are all about hands-on learning. Um, this is really important um, here at New College of Florida. Um, so we want to make sure that you're getting the experience uh, that you want. Um, so for example, you can go to Honduras for a coral reef project if you're studying marine biology. Um, we have uh, students who have created businesses during their independent study projects. We're a school that has um, alum, alumni, uh, many, many who have become entrepreneurs. We have students that think outside the box. They actually create their own jobs. This is the type of learning experience you're gonna have at New College. You get to drive your education. You get to call the shots. You get to say, well, listen, uh, for my independent study project, I'm studying history and you know what? I wanna go to Ireland to meet my family that I've never met my and, and, and create my family tree, do a video presentation, come back um, and you get credit for that. We had a student who did that. So you could be as creative as possible here. And our faculty will work with you uh, to make sure that it works into your curriculum. We have a student, um, her name is Tony Ginsberg. She created um, a solar carport. She won the Aussie Genius Award. Recently, she was on ABC News talking about her project. Um, 
these are the types of students uh, that thrive here at New College because they're um, encouraged to learn and to, to think in different ways and to, to question and to be curious. Um, senior Copstone projects. We've had students work on um, black tip sharks in the Gulf Coast, um, work on hip hop and racial issues in the US, um, class, working class and outside art through instrument design. These are just some examples of how creative you can be here at New College. Not only that, you can study abroad if you like. You can go outside of New College. You can learn more about the world around you, not just here in Florida, but go, go away. Um, this is something we really encourage students to do, study abroad. Um, we have something called the National Student Exchange where you can go not only overseas, but you can also go you can also go abroad. You can go to certain schools within um, the United States. So for example, if you want to study in um, California, if you want to study in New York, if you want to study in Texas, if you want to study in Ohio, we have schools all around the country where you can basically do an exchange. Uh, you would pay new college tuition and you would live um, and pay their, you know, whatever the school's room and board. Uh, but we've had students that do that. They've gone and they want to see what another school is like. So say, you know, you're, you're able to do that. Um, we're also part of the Eco League. So if you're interested in environmental studies, any kind of um, environmental program, we have um, membership within this organization and you can do an exchange in Alaska. You can go to Bar Harbor, Maine. You can go to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Ashland, Wisconsin, Prescott, Arizona. So these are opportunities that are waiting for you um, to take advantage of. We're part of the Cross College Alliance. Uh, we're not the only college here in Sarasota. We have the Ringling College of Art and Design. Um, we have the State College of Florida. Manatee Sarasota, we have the Ringling Florida State University, and we have USF Sarasota Manatee. We are able to um, work with these colleges and students are able to take classes at any of these colleges. So if you want to take an, an animation class, for example, at the Ringling College of Art and Design, that's what they're known for. Um, you can do that. You're not going to pay their tuition. Their tuition is 50000 a year. You're not have to pay their tuition. No, you're going to pay uh, Florida state tuition, in-state tuition for those courses. So that's a real perk. Um, you can take classes at uh, the USF Sarasota Manatee campus, which is right next door to us. So there's lots of opportunities to um, explore within our community. Uh, we also do social events and different um, kind of sporting events with these colleges as well. Um, I mentioned that the Career Center, the CEO, uh, the Center for Career and Engagement, um, we have a very personalized mentorship program, not only as a freshman, starting as a freshman, you'll have an academic advisor who will be assigned to you, you will also have a career mentor assigned to you throughout your four years. That means whatever you're looking into as far as jobs, whatever you're looking as far as professional development, we can help you and your, your career mentor can help you. So they will sit down with you and, and support you and coach you. And when you have ideas, you'll say, you know what, I wanna look into medicine. I wanna look into nursing or I wanna look into um, starting my own business. And they will help you through that process to try and you know get you where you need to be through internships, through research, through our mentorship alumni program. Um, like I said, personalization. This is what we're all about. Student life, we're a residential campus. Um, we, have, we have many different types of dorms. Uh, we have freshman style dorms, which is a large room that you share with one or two people. We have suite style dorms. We have living learning communities, which are themed style dorm. So if you're interested in outdoor adventure, um, you can live in those in that dorm. If you if you're interested in living in um, living with the international students or other students interested in culture and different and learning about different cultures, that's the global village. So there's lots of different, um, you know, places that you can live. Uh, we have many different student clubs and organizations, uh, professional clubs, we have social justice community service clubs, we have sports. Um, we don't have division sports because we are a small college, but we do have a competitive sailing team. We do have a crew team that's competitive. 
Um, but we have also some other teams as well of powerlifting. We, we are competitive in that as well. We have um, clubs such as, there's a funny one called the Anarchy Death Sticks. I don't know if you would guess what that was, but uh, it's interesting. It is a knitting club. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's one of the most creative names I've ever heard of for a club. Um, we do have a theater program as well. Uh, a full theater dance and performing arts program with the black box theater. So that's also something students um, can take advantage of. Um, how to apply. We are on the common application. We also have our own application. Um, no fee on either end, um, either or whichever you'd like to apply on. We do ask for a personal statement or an essay. We do need your transcripts from each high school and college attended, which includes if you have taken dual enrollment, um, we would need those transcripts from those colleges, um, an SAT or ACT score, um, and the counselor recommendations are optional. Um, so our, our, our middle range, 50% of our, our, our stats for a class profile, our GPA between 3.8, 4.4, um, SAT is 1110 to 1320, ACT 22 to 29. Um, we look, we do a holistic review. We look at your whole application. Um, we look at the clubs that you are in in high school. We look at what kinds of things you're doing outside of your academics. So we look at the whole picture. Our, our early action deadline is November 1st. Um, and then our record action deadline is February 1st. And cost of attendance, um, as, as was mentioned earlier, um, we have a Florida resident and an out of state. So our Florida residents, um, the direct costs are about 17,000, but that's before any scholarships. And we do offer scholarships to all of our students. Um, they are merit-based. Based on um, your GPA and test scores, you will receive between 1,000 and 3,000 a year for four years. And then if you have bright futures, that yeah, you can use here, use here as well. And any kind of, um, if you have Florida prepaid as well, you can use that too. So of course, it's a very affordable um, education. And remember, it's, it's a smaller college here. So you get that benefit of having a, almost like a private college feel uh, without that very high, pri high price that you would pay um, at a private school. And I think that is, the end of my presentation. Um, yeah, I could go on and on, but yeah, that's just a little snippet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sharon. That was such amazing information about New College. And hopefully, um, I know that a lot of our students probably don't know much about New College. I don't know that that's one that's talked about a lot, but um, for our Southwest Florida students, if you want to get away, but still be close enough, um, like, like Sharon said, it's an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. So it's, it's a day's drive to visit your family, but you're still kind of far enough away. Um, so thank you so much, Sharon. I also and, want to mention that we are having an open house. If you want to come visit, um, October 29th and it's free, you just have to register and then we can take a tour and meet our students and our faculty. Awesome. So students remember that October 29th. Yes. Awesome. All right. So students uh, do a Google search, look up New College of Florida and uh, figure out how to register for that on October 29th. And um, last but definitely not least, we are going to switch over to the University of Florida, which I know is one of our more competitive colleges here in the state of Florida. Um, it's usually one of the higher um, ranked colleges for our students. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful university. It has so much history. The buildings are beautiful and obviously they have Gator football. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it over to Pam with the University of Florida. So thank you, Pam, for joining us. Oh, Pam, you oh, are on, there you go. Yep, I just was clicking away. Had to hit all the different buttons. <laughs> so hi, welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Pam Lang with the University of Florida. I am the West Coast Regional Admissions Officer, so I am not your rep. That's my contact information, but that's, I only, I deal with California and Colorado. So, but this admissions.ufl, that is their contact that you want to reach out and find a lot of information on that site. 
So this first picture, picture of our beta of bells, the Carillon Tower, and we were talking about this earlier we were laughing it's on campus and it's just like the Bach Tower over in Lake Wales if you've ever been over there and it usually plays this beautiful music but our music students they can sign up and they can actually go up there and play the carillon and I was saying earlier that I heard uh, ACDC DC come out of that I've heard John Mayer it's just pretty fun Imagine Dragons so the students have a fun time playing the carillon so a little bit about the University of Florida I usually present to California students and they think we're down in Miami, but you all know better. You live down that direction, you know we are north. So that blue star, that's where the University of Florida Gainesville campus is located. And it's, there's, it's pretty rural around there, just like where you are. So you go out a little bit and you hit swamp. We, we're more like pasture, horse fields uh, when you go out a little bit from, from Gainesville. There's a little airport that I don't think, it, I guess you could, if you wanted to take a little hop up there, Delta and American do fly into Gainesville and it's only 15 minutes from campus. One of the cool things, this is if you're coming to Gainesville, you don't have to bring a car. We have these buses that go all over the city and with your student ID, you can ride them for free. That, that makes it really super easy. There's also scooters, oh my gosh. Y'all come up to Gainesville and y'all get scooters. And these are everywhere. There are thousands of these. Uh, parking at any college campus is at a premium. So these scooters, they get around just so much better. These are other pictures of the area. So I did say, like, we do have this one campus. It's a giant rectangle. Uh, right in the middle of it is our football stadium, um, basketball, our med school, law school, business. It's all right there on that one campus. But we do own a lake about 15 minutes south of campus. And it's called Lake Wahlberg. So those two pictures with the sailboats. That's part of what we own. And as a student, you can do so many things for free to show your student ID and away you go. I did read the, all those graphs you see out there. They had a sailing course and it was a, I think it was eight weeks. And they only, I think, can't remember if it was 35 or $40. So it was super easy and super fun to take a course just to learn how to do sailing. Springs, they're more popular in Northern, in Northern than they are in the South. We have springs everywhere. Great place to cool off. The picture in the lower right, that could be like a 30 foot spring underneath there, but you can see how crystal clear the water is. There's rivers like that. You just go float a tube for three or four hours. You're cooling yourself off that way. So, so many fun things to do besides just sit in the classroom. We want you to do things. We have read the research. We know that being active, being outside the classroom, it helps with your mental, like just your clarity, like being able to study and helps with your mental awareness. So we want you to do other things. So I was sort of letting you see all the different fun things going around. So we are a big school. We're the biggest one you've heard from tonight. We have about, oh, about 58,000 total students on campus. So that is a lot of students. You're like, oh my goodness. Yeah, and if you went to that football game last Saturday, there were 90,000 people you're there. And you're like, oh, that's just so many people. Yeah, but we have a 97% freshman retention rate. Y'all are coming to campus and you're going to those big giant football games, but then you're also joining a club with 20 or 30 people. And now you have your family, you have your connections and you come back next year. So that's what we're really excited about is that retention rate. Y'all are making it feel like home. Even though you're like four hours probably down the road, you'd like staying around in, in Gainesville. We actually the $960 million for research, we just surpassed that. We just got a new number after the spring and we're now over a billion dollars. And you don't have to be a, a senior to get involved in research at the University of Florida. You can do that as an incoming freshman. So it's awesome. We, there's a Center for Undergraduate Research that you can join. There's also the honors program. So when you apply to the University of Florida, one of the things you'll see is like, hey, do you wanna be considered for honors? And this, your application goes a little separate direction just for the honors, not for regular UF. So it doesn't matter if you get in or not with honors, it does not affect your application for University of Florida. But if you're accepted, there's a lot of really cool things. Like you have a couple of your classes are smaller in number. There's also people that come, there's a, a living learning community, so your dorm, that is for honors. I've heard it's a little bit quieter in that dorm. They're, they'll bring people in to do lectures, but they will also help hold your hand to get involved in that research. That's how much we want you involved. Artificial intelligence. This is our buzzword. This is what we're doing. We are dumping a ton of money into AI. Anybody ever hear that little sticker or see that little sticker on your graphic card that says NVIDIA? Yeah, well, one of those co-founders, he's a Gator. And so he helped build our AI computer. And with this, it, right, 
currently, right now, <laughs> our AI computer is the second biggest, strongest, fastest of any AI computer for colleges and universities, public and private, in the United States. We are just behind Texas A&M, but they don't own theirs. We own ours. So if you look at people that own it, we do have the best and fastest. But what we're doing, it doesn't matter what you study on campus, whether it's wildlife management or nuclear engineering or Japanese, whatever you're studying, there are three core AI courses that you can take to get AI certified. We are buying into this. We are, like I said, putting so much money into it. We just hired 100 or more faculty members just to teach AI. So we want y'all taking those courses. We are very well aware that the more successful you are, the better y'all make us look. So we want to do everything in our pops that we can that's possible to make sure you guys are marketable out in that workforce. Innovation Academy, if you have any notion to do like entrepreneurship, product development, then IA is maybe something you want to take a look at. Within IA, there are about almost 30 majors that are in IA Academy. If you apply to the University of Florida, if you check the box for IA, for Innovation Academy, your application now takes a, a turn and it heads towards IA. So you would get reviewed for IA. You can change majors within IA and it, people have a ball. I mean, it's so much fun. It's a lot of hands-on cooperative group learning. It's just really cool product development. You have your own little presentations. It's a cool program, but just keep in mind that it's now separate from the other majors at the University of Florida. You can change majors in IA, but you need to stay over in IA. And it also works on a spring summer um, IA when you graduate in May then you would start IA in the spring. So you'd have all that time from graduation until spring semester, which is in January. So a lot of our students in IA take a study abroad opportunity and head over to Dublin, which is really popular with them. Also study abroad opportunities. We have over 319 of them. So there's so many ways you can do it. You can do it, say you wanna do it with your major. Say you wanna do it like I've always wanted to go to Lima, Peru. Then you head to Lima, Peru. Say you wanna do language immersion and then you do language immersion. But with 319 opportunities, there may be something we don't have that you may have a best friend that heads to Florida Gulf Coast or heads to New College and they find out they have a program that we don't have. As long as you bring that paperwork and that information into our international office at least a semester and a half ahead of time, they said 90% of the chance that they're gonna approve it and you'll get the UF credit. That's how much we believe in study abroad opportunities how it just makes you a more well-rounded student. ROTC. College is expensive. ROTC, we have all four branches. So if you're thinking about that, talk to your recruiter and tell them specifically. Oops, sorry. Tell them specifically that you want to do like ROTC at a college or university, and they're going to talk to you about how that works. We do not admit based on major. We don't care what you want to study. It somehow y'all just work your way through this. So you are say in the application you put um, food science. And so you are doing that right now as a senior in your fall on your application. And then we say, hey, come be a gator. And then the time you come from for freshman orientation, we're like, oh, I see you put food science on your application. Is that what you want to study? And you're like, nope, uh, I want to do nuclear engineering. We're like, cool, here are your classes. Somehow you all just spread yourself out. 60% of our students do change your major at least once. So that does go on at our campus. So career fairs, Gator Career Closet, like I said, these are just ways that we are trying to make sure you are successful. So these are just ways for you to work on your resume, work on your interview skills, the Gator Career Closet. So say you come to Gainesville and you're like, I'm heading to Florida, I'm a first year student and I'm bringing shorts, t-shirts and flip flops. Awesome, because you know I'm a freshman, what, what else am I gonna do? But go to class and just hang out. But you get there and somebody's like, hey, there's a career fair next week. And you're like, career fair, I'm a freshman. I don't need to go to a career fair. They're like, no, you can get internships. And you're like, as a freshman, and they're like, yes. So you can definitely get internships between your freshman and sophomore year. And you're like, oh, I didn't bring any nice clothes. Well, you head over to the Gator Career Closet. It's completely free. There's a stylist over there. It's run by people your age, not my age. And you can get dressed for whatever you need. Like it's a career fair or it's an interview, whatever you need. And then because of COVID, they're offering letting you all keep the clothes or you can bring them back and they clean them for the next person. So impacted in any major. This is a term my California students are familiar with. And some of the big other schools outside of Florida, you, if you're applying to like a UCLA or a Berkeley, you need to be familiar with the, the word impacted. It means there's more students than seats. And that's not going on in Florida. So I, think, I don't think any of the other schools are impacted either. So with us, there's, you should graduate in four years. There's no reason why you shouldn't graduate in four years. I always put two caveats. One, unless you're having way too much fun. <laughs> and two, you keep changing your major. 
But other than that, you should be able to get into UF, get your classes, get your degree, and then get out in four years. We have, oh, so these pictures over here on the side, that's one of our engineering labs down there, they're building things. This is not part of our new engineering building. We just opened a new engineering building in the last a year, year and a half, and they have like a maker's lab in the bottom. And we toured that when we were on campus. And they have drill presses and lathes and 3D printers. And most people are familiar with the 3D printers in plastic. They also have a 3D printer in metal. And I think the person said it was like a million dollars for this printer, just for the 3D printer. So there's so many different ways. And if you want to do engineering, part of your first year, you take a course that introduces you to the, all the different aspects of engineering, like the mechanical, the electrical, the civil, the nuclear, the aerospace. So you make sure you're in the right spot. You're like, I just want to do engineering, but I'm not sure which one. That'll help you find which one you want to do. The top one is journalism. Journalism is really popular on our campus especially like when you start getting into like a concentration of sport management or sport journalism, excuse me. ESPN is always on our campus. And so we have amazing facilities. They're always using our facilities rather than their hot trailers on some of those games days. They come into our building sometimes because we just have amazing facilities. I was also talking to a mom in San Diego who was a Gator grad and came out to California and she was on the news in San Diego. And the first day she showed up for her job, she's like, awesome, I'm here. And she's like, oh my gosh. She like looked at the equipment. And she's like, oh, because they're like, what? She's like, I had better stuff on campus. And they're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> so we will have some of the top of the line equipment for you to be working with so that when you go out there in the real world, hopefully you'll be able to, very familiar with what they're doing. Student life. This is where it's at. This is part of the connection that you're making. When I'm out here in California, if I got off a plane and I have anything Gator on, at least one person is yelling at me and going, go Gators! Woo! So that's really our Gator clubs all over the nation. In fact, they're all over the world. I know a person who was in Singapore for work and there was a football game and they're like, I want to watch a football game, but I don't want to do it by myself. So they just got on the internet and like, oh, there is a Singapore Gator Club and he showed up and he had a ball and met people that like, you know, once you start going to those events, you're like, oh, I was in whatever fraternity or I was in this club and somebody else is like, oh, I know a person that was in that. When were you at UF? When were you on campus? So you network with these people. So that's really cool and fun. So if you guys don't want to stay in Florida when you're done, if you want to head up to New York City, Gotham Gators is one of the biggest Gator Clubs we have. I live in Colorado. Rocky Mountain Gator Club. They go hiking, they go skiing, they have watch parties. There's all sorts of things you can do with Gator Clubs all over the nation. So it is a, a traditional little college town. So there's about 135,000 people that live in Gainesville. So if you think about that, about 60,000 of those are gonna be students. And then another 35,000 are faculty and staff. So over half the town either works for UF or gets paid by, um, it wants to go there as a student. So we're all part of the Gator community. Over a thousand clubs and activities, over 60 Greek organizations. So we have traditional sororities and fraternities. A lot of people think it's just the sorority house and the fraternity houses. There's also a lot of fraternities at our co-ed that are based on things like, say what you wanna be, like for law or business or medical. There's also fraternities, like I was part of one called Alpha Phi Omega, and it is a service fraternity that's co-ed and it's based on, you have to keep your status by volunteer hours. So everybody is making sure we're getting our volunteer hours that way. So a lot of great ways to be involved that way. And we also have that on campus. And then sports teams, like I said, we don't want you just sitting in class, our intramural teams. We are D1 sports, everybody knows about the Gators, but there's also intramural teams. So maybe you play football now, maybe you wanna get involved in flag football or something. When you get on the campus, there's different levels of competition. There's, if you wanna play, say you play baseball, but maybe you don't wanna play D1 and you're not being recruited from D1. We also have clubs. So sport clubs also travel around most of the SEC schools. They wear the uniforms, they wear the Gator uniforms, but it's a club. So it's not the commitment level that you would have for a one team. We also have the Gator Growl. So down there you'll see Albert and Alberta Gator as part of a parade. So the Gator Growl is the nation's largest run student pep rally. And there's a week long of events. We have concerts, there's Raids. There's just so many fun things going on. They have movies on the lawns. A lot of fun things to go on for Gator Growl. A lot of the alumni will come back for Gator Growl year after year because it's so much fun. So how do you get into US? Yeah, it's a little tough. What are we going to do? We're going to look at your GPA. We're going to recalculate a weighted GPA. So anything you take that is AP, IB, ACE, or dual enrollment will give a full point. So like an A would be 5.0, a B would be 4.0. We're going to recalculate no matter what your high school is doing, we will recalculate. And then honors gets 0.5 bump. 
We're gonna look at your strength of schedule. We are not gonna have your grades for senior year, nor do we need any transcripts. You will self-submit your own academic record, like was mentioned earlier. So you'll just get an unofficial college transcript or high school, excuse me, high school transcript from your counselor and you'll put in all your courses. So you'll list it, say if it was dual enrollment. And for dual enrollment, there's instructions, like you list it twice if it's dual enrollment. You'll tell us if it's an honors class, if it's an AP. If you took anything in middle school, a lot of students are starting with maybe an algebra one or geometry, or maybe a first year language. If this were high school credit, you're gonna list that as well. So we're gonna get all your grades, all your classes, but senior year, you guys are still taking your classes. You shouldn't have very many grades that you're gonna to want to submit. So we're just gonna look at your strength of schedule. We will get a numerical value to see that you're still challenging yourself your senior year. Test scores, we're not test optional. We need either ACT or SAT. We will super score. One of my colleagues just mentioned about the super score. Take the test multiple times, send them all to us. Our computer will find the highest math and then look around, oh, this one has the highest English and put them together for a super, for a super score. And the self-reporting, that's what I mentioned, the SSAR. So once you do apply to UF, you'll start getting emails and you'll find out real quickly how much colleges like acronyms. So the SSAR is your student self-reported academic record. And then we're gonna do the holistic review. And this definitely comes into play, especially if you're on the fence for us admitting you or not. So you're gonna list all your academic activities. You're gonna talk about yourself in your essay. Read your essay. If you are handing it to a friend or a neighbor and somebody says, oh, that's a great essay. The one question you ask is, did you learn anything about me? That's what your essay is all about, is teaching us about you. So if you're talking about your dog or if you're talking about, I don't know, maybe a trip that you took, make sure I'm learning more about you. Use analogies, do whatever you need to do. Make sure I'm learning about you rather than more about the dog. Right? List your activities. Do not sell yourself short. Just don't say I played basketball. Okay, what else did you do? Things you take for granted for being part of a team. Where did you help make sure there was equipment on the bus when you had a weight game? Did you run a little kid camp in the summertime? Were you involved in that? What about acclimating, if you're an upperclassman, did you help acclimate the um, lower classmen into the sport by doing something special with them? Were there any fundraisers? All those things you take for granted, make sure you're, this is the one time you get a brag. So talk about those things. Okay, so your application, it says the word priority. I want you to ignore that. Your application deadline is November 1st. We will still take applications from November 2nd to March 1st, but that is space available only. And let me run some numbers by you. A couple of years ago, I looked at those. There are over 4,000 applications and we took 10 people. So do not do that. Get it in by November 1st. We are on the Common App, November 1st. Your SSAR, what I just mentioned about self-submitting your academic record, that is due by November 15th. That is bumped up from last year. So your counselors are like, oh, you have until December 1st. No, you have until November 15th. And then your test scores, which was December 15th last year, now is December 1st. So we need all this stuff. So November 1st is your application, but you still have time to finish taking those tests and get us those test scores by December 1st. The middle 50% of students we offered admission. So I'm, I'm a very visual, so I always do this. So if this is all the students we said, hey, come be a Gator. So let's go to the middle 50. So there's still 25% below and 25% above that we offered admission to. But the middle 50 had a 4.4 to 4.6 weighted, 1350 to 1490 SAT, and 30 to 34 ACT. Now, let me tell you what's going on this year. Last year, we went up 10,000 applications. We went from 55 to 65, which dropped our admission rate down to about a 26, 27% for incoming first year students. We just had a, a uh, whole office meeting this morning. They said compared to last year at this time, right now our applications are already up 35%. So um, that just tells you get that application in. Do not miss that November 1st deadline. Send us all of your test scores. Don't you can't super score them yourselves. If you have more than one test, we have to officially have those so that our computers can super score them. Talk about yourself in your application. Do not sell yourself for it. If you have family obligations, say you have little brothers and sisters that you have to take care of after school, don't hide that from us. You can't be involved in the same number of activities as somebody else who doesn't have any siblings. So this, definitely there's a place for family obligations. Talk about that. Maybe you have grandparents that moved in with you during COVID and they're still there and you get to, it's your privilege to help take care of them because they're not gonna be with us forever. So you're gonna help with them. Talk about it in family obligations. 
Maybe your family has a business or a restaurant that you're expected to be to and on the nights and on weekends. Again, you can't do the same thing as your peers. So make sure you are talking about that in your application. And this is how you're going to connect. So if you are not receiving emails from us right now, that QR code, go ahead and snap that. They'll take you to a website where you can input your information to start getting emails from the University of Florida. Again, this is my information. So don't look at that at the bottom because this is just for California students. You guys have in-state people that are right there. Chris Aria, he's your Lee County person and he had a family emergency tonight. So he's taking care of that. So I stepped in. That's how important you all are to us. So that's why I'm here tonight for him. So Chris is the one who's going to work, reach out to. Talk to your high school counselors. They will be able to provide contact information for people. That need. We're also on social media. So if you want to keep track of what's going on, the Office of Admissions is going to start posting things. They have been posting. So double check with that. And that's a little bit about the University of Florida. So yeah, thanks for coming tonight. Thank you so much, Pam. That was, again, a lot of information about one college in a very short amount of time. So uh, thank you to all of our experts and our presenters. I know this is in the evening, so I appreciate all of you sticking in with us throughout the day. It's a Thursday. Thank goodness tomorrow is Friday. So thank you for being here with us. Students, um, does anyone have any questions? We will stick on for a few more minutes and let us know if, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat, uh, put them in the Q&A. And while you are doing that, I am gonna go ahead and show you pull up. Uh, can everybody see the Future Makers website? So if you go onto futuremakerscoalition.com and you go under resources, um, along with a bunch of amazing resources for students. We have Career Pathways, we have FAFSA First. If you are a teacher or even a parent, you might find this FAFSA toolkit to be very helpful. There's all kinds of college planning. Um, please feel free to explore on the Future Makers Coalition website, but the Are You Ready webinar series is right here under resources for Are You Ready? Uh, you can register. As soon as you register for one, you will be able to see all of them. And I want to make sure that I mention our amazing partner, College Unmazed. Um, this book is gold. This is your key to whatever is next for you. So if it is college, um, and even if it is just career, this is information that will be helpful for you. This will make the system moving from high school into whatever is next, if it is post-secondary and then onto your career. This book will make it so much easier. And directly from this website right here, you have complete digital access to the entire book. So please feel free to use this access. Please feel free to share it. This is an amazing um, resource for all of our students and for our teachers and parents. So um, again, you can find it on futuremakers.com under resources and are you ready? I do see that we have a couple of questions. So the first one is for you, Sharon. Does New College of Florida have a veterinary program? That's a great question. We have a pre-veterinary program. Um, it's part of our pre-health uh, track programs. So we will prepare you to go to veterinary school with all the natural science courses um, that you will need. Thank you. Second question is also for you, Sharon. Uh, you talked a lot about the opportunity to study abroad. So we have a student who is asking if New College has an opportunity to study at a, an HBCU. Um, within the country, because are you talking about within the country? Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Um, I'm thinking, yes. With yeah. the National Student Exchange. That's a really good question. We have a list um, of all the schools. So I can give that, I can type that in for you. That's why you can, you can check it out. Um, so nationalstudentnsc.org is the website. I don't know if we were able to see that. Yes, nse.org. Yeah. So, no? 
I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. It's so, good. yeah. So, so in there will be the, the whole list is like, I don't know, 200 different types of different schools within the country. Um, so some of them may be um, the HBCUs. All right. So students, you can check that out and see the entire list there. Um, do we have any other questions? Doesn't seem like we do. All right. I don't want to end There's us too there. quickly. There is one more. Um, if I'm taking a heavy course load, I'm proud of in my senior year, how would I make that known to admissions? And also how much does an SAT impact chances of admission? So um, I'm gonna give the first question to Pam. If a student is taking a heavy course load that they're very proud of, how would they make that known to admissions? I know you've shared a lot about, um, you know, bragging about yourself. So how would a student do that? Uh, you're gonna, when you fill out your SSAR, you're gonna list all those courses and you'll tell if it's honors or AP or dual enrollment and we will get a numerical score. So there's nothing you need to say, the numbers are gonna speak for you. So that is going to show us that. And if you wanna, like when you're mentioning, like sometimes there's like like little spots in Common App, like anything else you need us to know, or you're allowed to put like a little blurb in there. We're not, when you put that out your Common App, nobody's gonna go through and be like, oh, you put a bullet point and it should be a complete sentence. Nobody cares about that. So go ahead and just put that stuff in there, no big deal. And then SAT for us, because we are getting so competitive, your weighted course subject GPA and your test scores make a big impact. Those are the first two things that are gonna catch our eye. And if you have an eye high, you know, SAT score and your grades are a little bit low, they tend to balance out and vice versa. If your grades are super high and your test score is like, whoop, that's a little rough. Those things tend to balance yourself out that way. So we will, that definitely comes into strong play for the University of Florida. Thank you. Uh, Samantha, FGCU, how much does an SAT impact chances of admission? Um, I would say basically what Pam mentioned. So if you have a higher GPA, we can kind of look at the overall student and understand you maybe are a little bit stronger in your classes than you are at test taking. That's why for us, I can't reinforce enough. I know it's the worst way to spend your Saturday morning, but if you're able to take it a few times, that can definitely help out. I mean, I've worked with students who they took the ACT or SAT five times, their scores never got better, but I could see how determined they were to attend FGCU. So I was able to kind of um, work work with that student a little bit more. So I know it's not fun, um, but it's hard to say if you do have a higher GPA and if you apply early, that definitely helps out a lot. And then as far as us for, for grades, um, since we don't accept the SSAR, we look at your high school, um, what classes you're enrolled in your senior year. We won't know what those grades are, but we are able to see what it is that you're planning on taking. Thank you. And then Sharon, New College, uh, same question. Yeah, so we'll we'll see the courses that you're taking in your senior year, like you know, like uh, you were just saying that we were. Uh, we'll take a look at all the different types of courses. We won't have the grades, obviously, but if we see, oh, you're taking three AP courses or whatever, one we IB. That's that's good for us to know because we look at your course rigor um, first within the, your high school career. Um, your your scores become secondary. Um, they're not as important. I because we know sometimes students don't test well um, but as long as we know you're, you're strong in your in your in your path in your courses um, and that you have that rigor there um, we just want to make sure that you'll be successful so we, we're looking at like a you know just like a, a bench score at least so we know okay um, you'll be fine but we would look at everything all the whole application um, but yeah, there's other factors in there besides just the, the scores. Thank you. I do. I, I know I've I've been working in the college and career space for for probably almost 10 years now. And I do think that our universities have come leaps and bounds in looking at the entire student. So they don't just look at you as a number. They do look at you as a student and they look at your coursework and your scores. And also if there's any additional information, um, I know a lot of volunteerism and leadership and those are things that also come into play. So um, even if you have lower test scores, there's a lot of test anxiety. Students do, don't do well with testing. Um, don't let that hold you back from applying to a college that might be one of your top choices. Um, 
Uh, one of the questions that came in, I know Pam had already answered it, is do colleges usually look at unweighted GPAs or is it only weighted? Uh, and she had a very good answer. They do look at both, but weighted carries a little bit more weight. They do want to see, colleges want to see that you are taking advanced courses and that you are challenging yourself. Um, it, 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 you know, if it's a course that anyone can get an easy A in, then anybody can get an easy A in. So they do want to see if it's, if it's a B, um, they do want to see that you're at least challenging yourself and, and taking more advanced courses and maybe getting a B, a B plus in those advanced courses versus an A in something that would be very easy and simple. Uh, we have two other questions. If I, let me see, so we answered that one live. Last question is if I'm graduating uh, just about three credits short of my associates, can I graduate early from undergrad? So I will open that up to any of you. First of all, as a high school student, like way to go for already starting on that and working towards your associate's degree. So mm -hmm. you're already on the right path. Don't stress your out, yourself out too much. So can they graduate early from undergrad if they are just a few credits short of their associates? Yeah, yes. they absolutely can. Yeah, I think we're all like, yes. So <laughs> for those classes that you're taking, wherever you're taking them, if it's like FSW, for instance, they're probably having you take those general education courses that you're going to need to take, whether it is um, at FGCU, New College, UF, wherever. Um, so absolutely, usually those will help out a lot. I do have to say, I always mention this anytime I have dual enrollment students, whenever you apply to one of the universities, please apply as a freshman. Even though you've got transfer credits, you are still considered a freshman in the eyes of the application status, but that doesn't mean that we'll disregard those credits. Very good point. That is something we definitely want to make sure that we mention. So even if you were a student getting additional credits, um, as Samantha said, still apply as a freshman first year, but they will take into account those credits and it will kind of balance out and then you'll have less to do to finish. So nice job as, as a high school student getting those credits in early. I don't see any other questions. So with that, I will go ahead and we'll try to finish up. So I'll share from here. So again, thank you all so much for joining us. As you can see, here is the list of all of our uh, state university system schools. We are very blessed to live in the state of Florida and that we have such a cohesive group of university systems and they do all work very well together. So um, another thing to think about is uh, maybe if you live closer to one and your goal is eventually to graduate from another, start at one, um, get some classes out of the way and then maybe look into transferring. And because we have a cohesive group of uh, systems and the universities all communicate and they work well together, transferring is not as difficult as it might be in some other states. So thank you again so much to our panelists and our experts. We're happy to have you this evening. Thanks for taking some of your, your time in the evening to spend with us. And thank you to all of our students, our attendees. And uh, our next episode of the Are You Ready series will be on the 22nd. And in that one, we'll talk about uh, building and exploring a successful college list. So now that you have a little bit of an overview, next is kind of narrowing down your list and how do you build that list and explore it and uh, go from there. So um, Dr. Amanda Sterk will be joining us for that one. Um, you can see the QR code there if you'd like to register. All you have to do is put your phone up to that, take a, put your, get it on your camera, and then click on the link that it sends you to. It will send you directly to that Future Makers registration form. Once you get to that form, you will be signed up for all of the, um, all of this, the series webinars that will be coming after. So again, there's our flyer. And thank you so much to uh, the panelists and the attendees. And we hope attendees that we see you in two weeks on the 22nd. So thank you again so much panelists for all of your expertise and for joining us. Have a good night, everyone. Okay.